Buenos dias. Hi, my name is Jeff Brown and I'm here to talk to you about TPRS 2.0 and why I think TPRS 2.0 is a game changer. So a little about me, I am a Spanish teacher, profesor de español at Orange Coast College in Costa Mesa, California. I've been using TPRS for the last 29, 30 years and I just discovered TPRS 2.0. Well, I discovered it about two, two years ago and the last semester, my last semester teaching, my Spanish, my beginning Spanish students, I had the best results I have ever seen. I am absolutely blown away by their achievement, the results, their ability to speak Spanish uh, without hesitation, correctly and accurately. And I'm here to talk to you about TPRS 2.0 and check this out. Not only am I going to talk about TPRS 2.0, I'm going to talk about TPRS 1.0, traditional teaching methods and as a bonus, I filmed my students at the end of the semester. So I gave my students an oral exam and I gave them extra credit if they would allow me to film them. So not only am I going to talk to you about TPRS 2.0, but you're going to see some of the results of TPRS 2.0. But if you want to learn more about TPRS 2.0, I suggest you take workshops through TPRS Books or TPRSBooks.com. I don't work for TPRSBooks.com. They're not paying me to make this video. I just love TPRS 2.0. So if you want to learn more, you want to know more, they give workshops in person, they give workshops on Zoom, and they have a TPRS or NTPRS workshop every summer that I go to. Okay, so a little bit more about me. Not only have I been teaching for the last 29, 30 years, but I'm a language student. I've been acquiring languages my entire life for the last 55 years, and so far I've done eight languages. Now, I don't speak all eight languages fluently, but I do speak three or four fluently, semi-fluently, and the other four I do okay. So the last two languages I've done were Farsi. I did about 200 hours of Farsi. Man Farsi, Kheli Farsi, Sokbet Mikonam, Dustaram, Kheli Dustaram, El Farsi. And before that, I did Arabic. So I did 800 hours of Arabic. I did 800 hours of Arabic. Arabic kelim el Arabi kweiz giden, rakt mas talim del Arabi fi mas, kweiz awi. So what is TPRS? What is TPRS 1.0 and what is TPRS 2.0? So for those of you who don't know, if you're brand new to TPRS, TPRS stands for Teaching Proficiency Through Reading and Storytelling with an emphasis on storytelling. So what we do in a language course is we teach language through stories and we try to make the craziest stories you have ever heard. We do co-creation where the students are helping us create the stories. And we know that when students get involved and they help us make these crazy, ridiculous, stupid stories, they love it. Now, why do we want to make crazy, stupid stories? We make crazy, stupid stories because we know the brain craves novelty. So we want to just create these great stories, crazy stories. And then with TPRS 1.0, most of the time, we didn't have students retell the stories. I've been doing this for about 30 years and TPRS 1.0, I had students retell the stories, but it was usually about maybe 10% of the students, just a little part of the students. Some of the students could retell the story. The majority of the students could not retell the story. And you know what? That's okay because language acquisition is all about input. And I proved in my video about Arabic acquisition that you don't need to speak the language to acquire the language. And in fact, I did 800 hours of Arabic. I only spoke Arabic about 10% of the time, 80 hours. And I did another, what is that? 720 hours of just acquisition. So for TPRS 1.0, we would tell these great stories 
crazy stories and sometimes we would have the students retell the stories. Now in my advanced classes, sure, I was having the students retell the stories more. And there's a lot of students, excuse me, there's a lot of teachers who have their students retell the stories. But at one point I just said, you know what, this is way too hard. So now we go to TPRS 2.0. What is TPRS 2.0? Well, first of all, TPRS 2.0 is 10 times slower than TPRS 1.0. It is so much slower than TPRS 1.0. Is we tell stories, but we tell them in very small, manageable chunks. So I use tprsbooks.com slides and I tell very little chunks. So in TPRS 2.0, we tell stories, but we tell, tell very little, small chunks of the stories, and then we ask students to retell those small chunks. And what we found is 100% of the students can retell those chunks, just little chunks. Two sentences, three sentences, four sentences, that's it. So with TPRS 1.0, I was doing four, five, six sentences. I was doing seven, eight, nine, ten sentences for these elaborate stories and students just weren't able to retell the story. And I thought, oh, that's okay. I did the same thing in Arabic. It's perfectly fine. No, it's not. It's not because the whole class can't produce the language at the same level. So what we do is we slow it down 90% or 80% or whatever. And then we just tell, we tell these little stories, little chunk of a story and then we ask the student to retell the story. And we'll work on that little chunk. I did a little chunk recently for an hour. I think we did three or four sentences for one hour. We did a story about George. I just started a new class. George lives in Big Ugly, West Virginia. He's from Unidas, Louisiana. And we spent an hour, maybe more than an hour, just on those two or three things. And we had students retell just that little part. Remember, TPRS 2.0 is all inclusive. We're getting all the students to retell these little teeny chunks of a story. Now, what do we do when they've nailed the chunk? Well, first of all, we have a barometer student. So I've always used barometer students. Lots of teachers use barometer students. A barometer student is the student that we choose. We're not gonna go on until that student is ready. So I'm not gonna go on until my barometer student is ready. What do we do next? We up the story. We add to the story. We ask, you know, where does George work? George works in Walmart in the penguin department. George works at Kentucky Fried Chicken in, in the drive-thru that's in a tower on top of Kentucky Fried Chicken. We just add stupid and crazy stuff. And we are spending hours and hours and hours on these little teeny chunks. One of the reasons my had such success last semester is because we did one story for 12 weeks. We just kept adding and adding and adding to the story. That was our story about George. I stopped it four weeks before the semester was over because I wanted to add a girl as the main character. So George was first, we did Elena second. We had lots of characters, lots of boys and girls in all of our stories, but our main character was George and then our next character was Elena. So at the end of this video, you're gonna see my students retell the story of either George or Elena. They got to choose. So one of the reasons I love TPRS 2.0, actually two reasons, is number one, it builds student confidence. I have never seen student confidence at the levels as I've seen, as I did last semester. The student level confidence was off the charts. They could all tell the story from beginning to end. They were happy, they were producing. The vibration, the energy in the class was phenomenal and I have never seen that ever. And I think the reason is we're building confidence. We are absolutely building confidence. We have every student in the class retelling little chunk, next chunk, next chunk, and we're adding. These are, this is a story, not just a chunk. That student is retelling half a story, three quarters of a story, eventually the whole story. So 
the confidence that those students are getting by being able to speak the language is phenomenal. So another reason I love TPRS 2.0 is what Blaine Ray calls language mapping. So in my opinion, what I thought is we're building this base. By doing these little chunks, chunk, 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 adding our little, and just keep working them and scrubbing them over and over again, I saw it as a base. We're base building. We're building this really, really powerful base of the most important words in any language. The sweet 16, the most important 100, 200, if you will. And I thought to myself, we're building this incredible base that's so powerful. And then I, I wrote to Blaine Ray, I talked to Blaine Ray, and he calls it language mapping. So what's happening is, in their brain, we're starting with this little character, George or Elena, and everything is connected. Everything is connected to George or Elena or our parallel characters, etc. And the language mapping we're doing is just phenomenal. So when the student wants to recall the word, where is it? It's exactly where he or she put it. So that's what Blaine calls language mapping. I call base building. It's absolutely phenomenal. I am blown away. So the magic of TPRS 2.0 is not only do we have students describe the situation, but the secret sauce is that we have them become the characters in the story. So let me explain how that works. Basically, we tell this story, George, Elena, whatever, and then we have the students become the main character and we have the students retell the story in the first person. So for the first week or the first day, we're saying there's a boy, his name's George. He lives in big, ugly West Virginia. He's from Unidas, Louisiana, and then the next day, or the same day, we have the students become the first person. We say, okay, you know what? You're George. You're George, now describe the, first, describe the story in the first person. So they have to say, I'm George. I live in big, ugly West Virginia. Uh, I'm from Unidas, Louisiana. And so what we do is we do that throughout the story. But not only do we do the first person, the third person, which we start with, we do the second person as well. So now I tell them, okay, now I'm George. Tell me about me. And I say, Johnny George or Jeffrey George, tell me about me. Now they have to practice the second person. And eventually we put two people in the story. We put a student in the story. We put another person in the story. And we want, we want to practice the first person plural. So tell me about you and George. So then they have to say, Oh, we live in, George and I live in uh, big, ugly West Virginia, but we are from Unidas, Louisiana. So that's how we're getting tons and tons of practice. First, second, third, first person plural, second person plural, third person plural. We're getting tons and tons of practice that TPRS 1.0, we rarely got to. So describe the situation is brand new to TPRS 2.0. And what describe the situation means is we have students retell those small chunks. We have them tell one chunk or two chunks. We might even put three chunks together. At the end of the class, we've got, you know, a, a, a five minute chunk or a four minute chunk. So describe the situation means we go around the room and we ask students to describe the situation, which means basically retell the chunk we're working on. And students, by doing that, build confidence. They can hear themselves speaking the language. They can hear their classmates speaking the language and they're practicing the language. Is that output? Absolutely. Is it forced output? Absolutely. Does it build confidence? Absolutely. And I think it's necessary. I really do. So let me be totally honest. The first time I tried Deep Air Open O was a total disaster. Oh my God, I feel so bad. So what happened was, I went to my first TPRS 2.0 workshop two years ago, and I was blown away. I was like, wow, this is it. I am ready, I'm going to try it, I am so excited. So a month later, a year ago or two years ago, 
I had my first attempt with a live class using TPRS 2.0 and it was a disaster. And the reason was way too fast. I went way too fast. I was teaching TPRS 2.0 like it was TPRS 1.0. I was doing five, six, seven, eight sentence chunks and I was just saying, okay, describe the situation. Okay, change it to the first person now. And the students were like, uh, what? What's he wanting to do? And they just couldn't do it. I was like, oh my God, that's it. I'm going way too fast. I've got to slow down 10 times than I've ever taught. So right now with TPRS 2.0, I am teaching 10 times slower than I have ever taught. The problems with TPRS 1.0 and traditional teaching are basically the same. It's way too fast. Too fast, too soon, too much. Now, are there good TPRS 1.0 teachers out there? Absolutely. Do they go slow? Absolutely. So TPRS 1.0 is still good. I think the big difference between 1.0 and 2.0 is the fact that we're having the students describe the situation all the time, continuously with these little chunks, and we're changing from first person, second person, third person by inserting the student in the story or having the students become the main characters themselves. I think the biggest problem with traditional teaching is it's rocket speed fast. I think it's way too fast for most students. Now, can some students acquire the language in traditional methods, traditional teaching? Yeah, I did. It's possible. But I think only the top 10%. I think we're only getting the top 10%. And the reason is the same. It's always been the same. Too fast, too much, too soon. So right now, you're gonna see the results of TPRS 2.0. Once again, last semester, I gave my students an oral final exam, and many of them allowed me to film them during this exam. So their assignment was they could retell the story, the George story or the Elena story. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, they can tell stories, but can they speak the language? Sure, they can speak about themselves. We, we do lots of activities that are not story related and they can tell stories. But the important thing I want you to watch is look at the confidence, look at the lack of hesitation and look at the accuracy. Now, are all of them gonna be perfect or do well? No, of course not. Are we gonna have a range? Of course, you're gonna see a range, a large range. But again, look at the confidence level, look at the lack of hesitation and look at the accuracy. Hola a todos, uh, mi nombre es Ryan. En mi clase uh, me llamo Cabezón porque tengo un cabeza muy grande. Y uh, mm, uh, un, un poco sobre mí. Uh, uh, tengo 24 años, tengo 24 años. Uh, yo, Yo encanta, yo encanta aprender uh, idiomas. Yo encanta aprender. Uh, uh, ahora uh, yo, uh, yo uh, aprendo mm, uh, tres idiomas, uh, vietnamita y español y, y francés. Uh, pero en mi opinión, uh, español es uh, la idioma mm, uh, bon más bonita. Hay una chica uh, que se llama Elena. Y Elena vive en, en Maui, un isla de Hawaii. Uh, vive en un uh, ca, uh, casita, casita en un árbol en, en la playa. Y en su camis, casita hay seis dormitorios y seis uh, baños, pero no hay cocina. Uh, entonces uh, Elena necesita um, ir a la Panda Express, porque en Panda Express tiene comida, sí. Y, y en Panda Express, Elena come, come, uh, uh, come y uh, va a, al baño <ríe> en Panda Express. Y uh, en Panda Express hay un uh, dueño, 
hay un dueño que se llama Panda y Panda es el dueño y el presidente de Panda Express. Yo soy um, presidente y dueño de Panda Express. Sí, sí, yo tengo un una restaurante. Uh, yo, inventé, uh, yo inventé Panda Express. Uh, yo trabajo y uh, como y, uh, y uh, voy a baño y, uh, y limpio en Panda Express. Uh, yo limpio todo, limpio Panda Express y limpio uh, mi restaurante a uh, baños. Uh, yo no vaga, ¿por qué? Porque yo soy dueño de Panda Express. Sí, no, no vaga, no vaga. Uh, Uh, Elena uh, va a Omaha, Nebraska. Panda y Elena va, va al baño uh, en, la, en la restaurante. Y también, ch, ch, ch. Ah, también Panda limpia el baño y limpia todo. Limpia todo. Uh, Elena necesita pagar uh, para sus comidas su comida y el panda no paga para panda uh, es el dueño de panda express y so después elena va a omaha nebraska para elena quiere elena quiere conseguir a uh, elena quiere conseguir cirugía plástica en panda express hay un baño porque Panda tiene dinero. Un baño para hombres y mujeres. Para todos. Panda trabaja limpia. Va a baño, cocina y come. Pero Panda no paga porque es un dueño y presidente. Pe um, Elena paga. Elena está en Omaha, Nebraska, porque Elena visita Dr. Mu. Dr. Mu es un vaca y doctora. Trabaja en Omaha, Nebraska. Dr. Mu hace cirugía de plástica, hace todo. Ella quiere. Um, cirugía plástica, ella quiere mucha, quiere seño más grande y nariz más grande y liposucción y nagas más grande también. Y um, en Omaha, Nebraska hay una doctora, um, muy famosa doctora, es, uh, es doctora Mu, es una doctora de cirugía plástica y una vaca. Um, doctora Mu, Hace todo la cirugía plástica um, en su oficina está en Omaha, Nebraska. Um, en, su, mm, en su oficina hay un asistente que se llama Prashid e, y es un, es un gato de Elena también. Um, Prashid um, tiene un trabajo interesante, interesante uh, que es duerme los pacientes uh, con sus perros y su calientes aliento. Okay, good job. Yo soy compadre, uh, vivo en Irvine, uh, tengo un carro, tengo un Volkswagen Jetta, uh, trabajo y no tengo novia, no tengo esposa, y ¿qué más? Yo, uh, yo tengo 42 años, mm. ya yeah, yo soy de Glendale. Ok, hay un chico, el chico es George, George está en uh, Devil's Den, California, uh, pero tiene, una, tiene un problema. Quiere Coca-Cola, pero no hay Coca-Cola en California porque Cabezón tomó toda la Coca-Cola en McDonald's. 
George sabe que hay mucha Coca-Cola en Chicago porque hay una fábrica allí, uh, una fábrica de Coca-Cola. Así que George va a Chicago. Uh, va a la fábrica, toca la puerta, pero nada. ¿Por qué? La fábrica está cerrada. Oh no, George, oh no, George grita, uh, vomita. Uh, está cerrada porque uh, es un día de fiesta. Es el día de amistad, uh, la chica de la clase de español. Ella uh, es muy famosa porque inventó Coca-Cola en su casa, en, en su garaje de su, uh, de su casa con su tortuga Flash. Que George va al Caribe y le dice, ¿tienes Coca-Cola? Ella le dice, no, tengo Pepsi. Uh, ella tiene mucha Pepsi porque trabaja para Pepsi y gana un barril de Pepsi cada dos minutos. Uh, es un modelo, modelo y una rapera para Pepsi. Uh, tiene un jacuzzi con Pepsi caliente y ellos nadan en el jacuzzi. Uh, George, así que, so, George uh, sabe que hay mucha Coca-Cola en Corea del Norte porque Kim Jong-un tiene mucha Coca-Cola. Así que George va a Corea del Norte, uh, camina a Los Ángeles, luego camina sobre el agua uh, a, la, a Corea del Norte. Uh, camina sobre el agua porque es un santo. Uh, en Corea del Norte, a la mansión, uh, la mansión tiene, la mansión de Kim Jong-un tiene una muralla alta. George escala la muralla y salta en el patio de la mansión. Pero hay un problema. Hay muchos animales que defienden la mansión y Kim Jong a Kim Jong-un, Corea del Norte y la Coca-Cola. Um, hay pollos y patos. Los animales uh, son pollos y patos. Y yo, yo soy un animal. Yo soy paripollo. Yo, yo defiendo Kim a Kim Jong-un. Um, nosotros ataquemos a George. Pero George pelea muy bien. Uh, pelea y, y mata. Me mata. Y mata a Donald, mi amigo, Donald del Pato, uh, los con sus manos y su vomita. Los otros animales escapan. Mm. Luego, George entra a la mansión en, un, en una ventana. Va al baño, uh, donde está Kim Jong-un y la Coca-Cola, pero no toco no toca la puerta porque Kim Jong-un abre la puerta desnudo. Uh, Kim Jong-un dice a George, ¿Quieres Coca-Cola? George le dice, sí. Kim Jong-un le dice, súbete. Y luego los dos se bañan en la Coca-Cola y toman la Coca-Cola y la, uh, lavan sus pelos. So that's it. I want to thank you for watching and most importantly I want to thank my students for participating and I'm sorry if I didn't get you all in the video. I know I had a lot of students participate and I had a lot of students that I filmed. So you know a last thought I just want to say you know we can teach students using traditional methods and we can teach students using TPRS 1.0 and it works. It's been working for years. The problem is, for most students, they're just not getting it. I would say for about 90% of students, we're just going way too fast. We're leaving them behind. And I know a lot of us are thinking, okay, well, they just have to practice outside of class. What if they practice out of, outside of class? Well, that would be great. The problem is, most students are not practicing outside of class. They're not getting enough practice. 
or they're not practicing the right way. Now, do I need TPRS 2.0? No, I could practice outside of class. I could acquire language through natural methods or TPRS 1.0 because I practice a ton outside of class. In fact, probably 90% of my acquisition is outside of class. So my goal, my dream is that we all teach using TPRS 2.0 because what TPRS 2.0 does is it creates that outside situation in the class. We get students so confident and so strong in the language that they're more apt to, or they, they want to more practice outside of class. So thank you once again. Thank you all my students. Thank you Orange Coast College. Adios, Afroego, Zaijen, Jodafes, uh, and Masalema.